another potential top 10 pick at the wide receiver position in this year's draft because two wasn't enough. Washington's Rome Odunze enters the conversation. So how are you feeling about Odunze out of Washington? I'm going to give you a little spoiler here for okay. my rankings here at the end of the show. Roma Dunze is actually my wide receiver too in this class over Malik neighbors and might be a spicy take, but uh, you know, 21 years old coming out of Washington um, has just kind of this perfect height, size, speed um, combination for a guy tested well at the combine does so many of the little things, right. Kind of like a Marvin Harrison jr. Where he's just super, super well-rounded led the NCAA with 1,640 receiving yards in 2023, 13 receiving touchdowns, averaged 17.8 yards per reception, had year-over-year growth each of the past three seasons, saw jumps in his target share, yards per reception average, touchdown total, just plays with a ton of play strength. He's a tough dude, but he's a tough dude that has, I think, a lot of finesse that just has me absolutely enamored. I think he shows a lot of lower body strength in particular. Like there are times where he'll just like, you know, players on, on a tackle attempt are just dragged down the field. Um, like 19.3 breakout age. That's in the 84th percentile over the past two seasons, 95th percentile in receiving grade, um, 78th percentile in terms of uh, separation percentage, 84th in yards per route run. Um, again, not like a yards after the catch maestro, but again, just one of these guys that I think is probably, you know, outside of Marvin Harrison Jr., the safest overall wide receiver prospect in this class. Yeah, he's he's another one. Like, again, like you just you see, watch him. It's it's very clear why he's going to be a top 10, uh, a potential top 10 uh, overall pick here. And Washington's offense, too, like they had they have or I should say, I guess had a really nice offense there in 2023, but they built a lot of that around getting the ball into the hands of Odunze and letting him to go to work, right? Like there's, there's a ton of wide receiver screens for him on tape where, you know, he's getting offensive linemen out in front of him, blocking for him, creating those yak opportunities, but also a go route specialist, 30% of his routes um, in 2023 were go routes. And not surprising considering that size speed combo, like you said, which is going to be key for him in the NFL as well. And just some really nice plays on tape where basically, you know, when you're watching him on those go routes, he he's the man that can do both right on, on those deep routes. He can shake defenders and, and get open, but also come down with those contested catches and, and win against tight coverage. So very exciting player. I, I mean, you know, the other thing with Odunze, he was fed the ball a ton, like I said, in Washington's offense. But there were other guys there that were legitimate target competition between Jalen Polk and, and Jalen McMillan. So not too much of a surprise to see like his yard per route run figure below that of Harrison or neighbors and was actually ninth among the power five wide receivers in this year's class. So it's not like an overly exciting number, but I wrote up an article this past week looking at like personnel adjusted yards per route run for wide receivers, essentially looking at offenses that that utilize more wide receivers on the field. How would that makes it more difficult for each individual wide receiver to command a higher yards per route run total? And Odunze's actual yards per route run deviation, like over expected, was among the best in this year's class when taking that into account, indicating that you know, his yards per route run total, his actual yards per route run total, that is, was actually more impressive when considering those less favorable situations. So all that to say, yeah, the Odunze really is a, an elite wide receiver prospect, absolutely deserving of that top 10 pick. And he's, like you said, between two and three, you know, him or neighbors, it, it's like, it feels like Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddle for me in, in 2021, where I'm just happy with either one there. I don't care if it's, <laughs> uh, as long as I'm getting one, I'm I'm extremely happy. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I think honestly, from a, a dynasty perspective, like you're, if you end up with any of these three wide receivers, uh, especially, you know, long term, I don't think you're going to have any complaints. Depending on landing spot, I also think each three of these could make an immediate impact in mm -hmm. redraft leagues. So, like, really just kind of depends on, you know, your, where you're going to split hairs with these guys, maybe, you know, kind of what you value. I think neighbors definitely a flashier overall wide receiver. I just think Odunze, generally speaking, I, I like the 
you know, I think he's just a, a little bit more play strength, which is a style that I kind of prefer in my wide receivers. But like, again, with these top prospects, we're splitting hairs. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely splitting hairs landing spot for sure. Going to play a part, right? Like there's, there's talk of Odunze potentially going at nine to Chicago, right? So it's a little bit more crowded in that offense with Keenan Allen and, and DJ Moore there. So you could see him becoming more of that consensus wide receiver three in, in redraft, at least for, for these rookies, if that were to be the case, but there's also going to be opportunity for him in other potential landing spots to come in and be the wide receiver one or wide receiver two at worst. So it's going to be fun. It, it's going to be really fun to see how these uh, this top 10 shakes out and where these three wide receivers go.